We look around the world today and we see starvation, suffering, heartache, ethnic unrest, you name it. There seems to be a lot of bad things happening all around the world. People, thinking people today, wondering why are all these things taking place? Why, why, if there's a good God in heaven, why do all these negative things, destructive things, nasty things take place on this earth? By the way, this is a chart I found interesting. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's updated as far as I can get it right now. There's a couple of more years on it, it goes through 2012. But natural disasters, are they on the upswing? Yes. Look at there. You can, I mean, this is... Uh, not just because of reporting. They're on the upswing. They look, people look around and they think, why is all this taking place? All this sick, the suffering, death. If there is a good God in heaven, why is all this taking place on our earth today? Why, God, why do innocent people suffer? Jesus' disciples came to him one time and asked him about that very issue. And Jesus responded with these words, Luke 10, 18, I saw Satan like lightning fall from where? Hey, heaven. Now, most people's concept of Satan is generally not that he would come from heaven. Most people's concept, if you go out onto the street and said, describe Satan, generally they're going to describe him with uh, a red suit and horns and a long tail. Right? I mean, this is the way some people describe him. In fact, uh, several years ago, I was conducting a seminar in Fort Wayne, Indiana. When I finished up that evening uh, talking about this subject, well, a lady came up to me and she said, uh, let me tell you this story. And this is the story she told me. She said, you know, many years ago in the Midwest, there was a big costume party going to be held in the center of a fairly large city. And they, it was going to be like a community-wide thing and really... Uh, Thousands of people are going to be attending this huge costume party. Now, one individual that was, uh, lived about 10 blocks in the downtown area, he decided, well, you know, I'm not really going to go to it. But at the last moment, he thought, well, you know, I'm going to go to this costume party. And, and the places that were selling the costumes for this great uh, event for this city, uh, he, one time he got down there, the only one that would fit him was a one that looked like the devil. You know, with the red, the horns, the tail, all this. The only, it's the only one he could, it would fit him. And so he said, well, if that's what I got to go as, that's what I got to go as. And so he, uh, he got, got ready that evening. And, and there were so many people going down there. Now, he only lived about 10 blocks from downtown. And there were so many people crowding in there. He was going to drive down and park, get parking downtown. But he thought, wow, there's so much traffic. I might as well just walk. Now, as he started out the door, he saw, you know, there were some clouds in the sky. But you didn't think much about it. But you know how it is in the Midwest? Storms can blow up quickly. So as he began to walk, the wind began to blow. The rain began to fall. And he thought, oh, man, I'm going to get soaked here. Well, the only place he could see that he could get out of the rain was there was an old big stone, an old German church uh, that was there. And in the front of that church, it had a big overhang, a big eave that he could kind of slip up inside of it. Okay? So he ran, got up inside of it, and it was raining, it was lightning. And that just so happened that night inside the church, they were having a church service. And just so happened that night, the preacher was preaching about the subject of hell and the devil. Now, there was so much lightning and thunder and everything taking place in the area. The lights on the church were going on and off. And the preacher was quite fired up. He was making it very descriptive. Now, outside where our fellow was, it was raining harder and harder and harder. He said, even under this eve, I'm getting soaked. I'm worried. The lightning was flashing. He thought, I'm going to get hit by lightning. And so finally, he said, I got to get, get inside. I'm going to test this door and see if I can get through. And so there was a big crash of lightning. The lights flickered off in the church. And just then, this, this man dressed up like what people believe Satan is like. Uh, he opened the door and went inside. Once he got inside, he realized he was right in front of the entire church. The lights came back down. Got on. And some lady jumped up and said, it's Satan. Let's get out of here. And so they all started running away. And, he said, and, he, and of course, he didn't want them to know he wasn't Satan. He, so he said, wait, wait, wait. They ran faster. <laughs> Finally, one old guy couldn't run very fast. And 
And uh, finally, this guy dressed up like Satan grabbed this old guy by the arm. And the old guy looked around at him and said, Mr. Satan, I don't know what I'm doing in this place. I've been serving you all these years anyway. <laughs> and that was the story the lady told me. <laughs> Satan. What does the Bible tell us? Well, Jesus said, he said he beheld Satan like lightning fall from heaven. Isaiah 14, verse 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? The Bible says that his name was Lucifer and that when, before he fell and became this evil angel, he was a beautiful angel in the heavenly kingdom. What does the Bible teach about angels? I'm going to do one uh, particular class on this, on angels coming up in a few weeks here where we're going to go over it thoroughly. But tonight we're going to look at this one angel. Psalm 103, verses 20 and 21, it says, Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding. Obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. The Lord, there is lots of angels in heaven. And Satan was among those angels in heaven. In fact, the Bible says this of Satan. It says, You were the model of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. So Satan, when he was in heaven, was the guardian angel. In, in the Old Testament sanctuary service, when God instructed them how to build the sanctuary, they had a mercy seat where it was really to have God's presence. And across that mercy seat were two angels stretching their wings. And that represented what was taking place in hev heaven. And Satan himself was stood next to the throne of God. There, here you can see a kind of a p artist rendering of what that old uh, sanctuary would look like of the sanctuary in heaven. Satan himself was next to the throne of God. Ezekiel 28 verse 12, it says, Thus saith the Lord God, you were the, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Then it goes on to say, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. You have said in your heart, I will ascend to the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. The Bible describes the rebellion that took place in heaven, of, led by Lucifer, was as a mystery of iniquity. It calls it, uh, what took place was the sin that became in his own heart, it took place from Satan's own thinking. Satan began to want to be like God. He wanted to ascend above God. And he began to speak to the other angels of heaven and claim that God was not fair. His laws were not fair. He was not judging fairly. And that if he was in charge, it would be a lot, lot better. Well, what took place? There was a battle that took place in heaven. And the Bible says here in Revelation 12, 7, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and, and his angels fought. That, so that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent of old, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, he, who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. There began a war in heaven, and the devil and his angels were cast out. Now don't think this was some kind of ethereal type war. The Bible tells us that one angel in one evening slew 185,000 Syrian soldiers, Syrian soldiers. One angel, one night. So when there's war in heaven, it was something. The devil and his angels were cast out. One third of the angels of heaven were deceived by Satan and they were cast out of heaven. Their place was no longer found in heaven because he put, he put them out. Well, the Bible says, then, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows he has what? Short time. Here we are in the book of Revelation again. It said that the devil has come down because he knows his time is short. The devil... What was going to happen then? You know, the angels rebelled in heaven. Right then, God could have just spoke and all the angels that rebelled against him could have gone out of existence. Yes or no? Yeah, yeah there's no question about it. But if God had done that, then 
possibly the other angels that were in heaven would not have worshipped him out of love, but would have worshipped him out of fear. They thought, well, you know, if, we, if I do this, if, if we disobey God, we'll end up like the others, we'll be destroyed. So God had to let the evil that came into the universe by Satan's choice begin to work itself out. About this time that Satan rebelled, the earth had been created. And the question is asked, did God create the earth as merely as a dumping place for Satan? No, not, a, not at all. Why do innocent people on this earth suffer then? If you go to the Bible, we're going to look at this in depth next Friday night, in depth when I talk about God's answer to evolution. But God created this world perfect in beauty. There wasn't one sin in this world. Everybody, everything was perfect. He commanded Adam in Genesis 1, 28, have dominion over the feast of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So Adam and Eve were in charge of everything on this earth. They were told to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And there was no sin. There was no suffering. There was only one thing that Adam and Eve could not do. They could not take of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 2, 16 and 17, it says, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely what? Die. Die. God gave them a warning. Don't take of this fruit of this tree. Don't eat of it. You will die if you do it. That was their warning. Well, the devil in the form of a serpent came down and spoke to Eve. And in verse Genesis 3, 1, it says, Has God indeed said, You shall not have eat, eat of every tree in the garden? We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Genesis 3, 2 and 3. Well, this is what the devil said. Genesis 3, 5. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. This is the first lie recorded in the Bible. The devil deceived Eve and Adam, then took of the fruit himself, and they brought sin into the world. The, the devil is a deceiver. Amen? Amen. He wanted to, he's the one who brought the suffering in on this planet. Sin interrupted God's perfect plan and Adam and Eve had to be cast out of the garden. What were the effects of the fall? Well, Genesis 3.24 tells us, After he drove the man and placed him east of the Garden of Eden, cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. They could not have the tree of life anymore because they could not have perpetual life after they had sinned. The, the curse was given in Genesis 3.19. It says, Dust you are and dust... You will return, and Genesis 5 records what took place. All together, Adam and Eve lived 930 years, and then he died. The curse of death came on them. Romans 6.16 is a great text that tells us about obedience. It says, Do you not know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you're the slaves of the one you obey, whether of your slaves of sin, which leads to death, or obedience which leads to righteousness. When Adam and Eve obeyed the devil, they turned the dominion of their world over to the devil. He became the prince of this world. A magnificent world in deep trouble. What would God do? Would God destroy this rebel planet? God could have just done away with Adam and Eve. Yes or no? Yes, yes he could have. But God wanted no one to serve him out of fear but everyone to serve him out of love. Yeah. And so God had to let the sin issue play itself out in human history. God promised a savior to save us back from this sin which the devil brought in. This was a promise from Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity, that's a separation, between you and the woman, that's Satan, and the woman, Eve, and between your offspring and hers, he, that's Jesus, shall bruise his head and you shall bruise his heel. My friends, God promised right there in the Garden of Eden that a Savior, Jesus Christ, was going to come to this world. My friends, when Jesus was born, he knew the devil well. He met the devil, be, Satan, before he got thrown out of heaven, when he threw him out of heaven. 
He knew the devil when he was on this earth. When Jesus was born, he was, he was persecuted by Roman officials. They had to flee to go over into Egypt. He had, he, his entire life had to meet the devil face to face as a human being. Genesis 19.10 it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what? The lost, or that which was lost, on the King James Version. Je Jesus came to this earth to seek and to save the lost, and the devil came to this earth to bring confusion, chaos, and heartache. The only way the devil, the devil knows his time is short, the devil knows he's going to be destroyed, but God, the only way the devil can get back at God is by hurting God and his people. And so Jesus came down here, Jesus was persecuted the entire time. And Jesus finally laid down his life on the cross. The devil's persecution of Jesus finally went so far that Jesus, who never did a single thing wrong, had to face the death of the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, my friends, every single angel in heaven knew what the devil was like. There was no more proof needed. But for the, all the worlds, my friends, God is giving, showing us what is going to happen. John 3, 20, 17, it says, For God did not send His Son into the world to what? Condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. This is my favorite text in the Bible, John 3, 17. God didn't send His Son to condemn the world, but to save the world. Amen? This is a, in, encouraging to me. Jesus went down to the Jordan River after he had worked for many years resisting the devil all the years of his life. Then he went down to the Jordan River and there he was baptized by John the Baptist. The Bible says this in Matthew 3, 5, and 6. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Jesus came down and John didn't want to baptize him. But John, Jesus said, please do it because this is proper for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then Jesus consented. He went up out of the water after his baptism. At that moment, heaven was open and he saw the Spirit of, of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him and a voice from heaven saying, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am what? Well, please, Jesus was baptizing. God the Father spoke to him. Then Jesus faced Satan's temptations head on. It says Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil, Matthew 4, 1. Let me show you what that looked a little bit. This is, took a tour of Israel. I'm hopefully going to have another one this year. Uh, we're planning it. But we took a tour of Israel. This is the Mount of Temptation uh, right in behind here. So you can see what this area looked like. It's pretty rugged. Jesus was out in that area 40 days, 40 nights, without eating, without drinking. And the, then the devil came to him. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now, isn't this, this would be quite a temptation. If you haven't eaten anything for 40 days and you had the power to tell stones to become bread, you might do it, right? Yes. You might do it. But Jesus wouldn't do it. Jesus, those stones would have been happy to become bread for Jesus, wouldn't they? I mean, if, when we study the Bible, the, the whole universe wants to do what Jesus wants them to do. But he said, if you are the Son of God. Did the devil know he was the Son of God? Yes. That one statement right there, Jesus said, oh, no, I'm not doing that. Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And he whipped the devil on that first temptation. Temptation number two. The devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the, te of the temple. If you are the Son of God, again, he said, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up and bear you in their hands so that you will not smite, strike your foot against the stone. So the second temptation, he again says, if you are the Son of God, but this time the devil actually quotes the scriptures. Amen. He quotes it. Amen. This is uh, really unbelievable. But Jesus would not fall for that temptation. He answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Amen. Test number two. Number three. The devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. 
Jesus was a young man. Jesus was a human like you and I. Jesus knew what was coming. He knew he was going to face the death of the cross, which in itself would be horrendous. Plus, he knew he was going to take upon himself the sins of the entire world throughout all time. He knew this was coming. And yet, he would not fall for this temptation. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. Satan tempted Jesus with food, pride, and power. And my friends, the devil still works on us with the same ways these days we live in. Amen? Amen. Food, pride, and power. Many other ways too. Jesus called him the father of all lying. He is a liar and the father of it, John 8, 44. This is what it's, I like this, this uh, version here. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, but not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. What a beautiful translation. For he is a liar and the father of lies. So what did Jesus say about the devil? When he lies, he's speaking his native language. My friends, the devil was going to do everything possible to try to get you out of his kingdom. Jesus talked about the human suffering and what brought human suffering. When he met, met a lady who had been sick for 18 years, and what did he say to her? He healed her in Luke 13, 16. He said, should not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom what? Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath. Jesus pointed that the, the issue of human suffering came from who? Satan. Human suffering on this earth does not come from God. It comes from Satan. The perfect illustration of this is the book of Job. Job 1.1. In the land of us, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and a large number of servants. My friends, Job was rich. Did you get this? Even by today's standards, if you had that in the United States of America, you would be rich. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. This was who Job was. He was the guy. He, let's see, who was the richest man? We would, I guess we'd call him, who was, who was the rich man? Bill Gates? Can we say him? He was a Bill Gates. He was the richest man. He had it all. Sheep, oxen, uh, camels, all of these things. He had them. He was rich. Then... The drama begins. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? <laughs> Did the Lord know where Satan was? Yes. Oh yeah, he knew where he was, where he'd come from. But he wanted Satan to speak. Satan answered the Lord from roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. Then God challenges him. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on the earth like him. He's a blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Then Satan replies, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? Have you blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds have spread throughout the land? God replies, but stretch, Oh, Satan continually... But, but stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your faith. Then God said to Satan, Very well then, everything he has in your hands, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. In that day, Job lost all his children, all his possessions, and re but he remained faithful to God. Who brought all this suffering upon Job? It was Satan. It wasn't God. On another day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them to present himself before him. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? 
Satan answered the Lord from roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless, upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. He still maintains his integrity. Though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Skin for skin, Satan replied, a man will give all he has for his own life, but stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. So next, Job gets this. The Lord said to Satan, very well, he's in your hands, but you must spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful soul sores from the top of his feet to the top of his head, bottom of his feet to the top of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. Who was it that brought this upon Job? Satan. Satan is the author of human suffering. In all of this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrongdoing. Who hurt Job? Well, who was it that plagued Job? Satan. Who stole his livestock and killed his servants? Satan. Who brought the tornado that destroyed his sons and daughters? Satan. The Lord may allow difficulties to come and test our loyalty and love, but Satan is guilty and the one responsible for the evil on planet Earth. Satan is the author of human suffering. And my friends, I'm telling you, for every single one of you and for me, there is a battle going on whether you're going to be following Jesus Christ or following Satan. Now, many people have accused God of all the suffering that goes on in this world. In fact, uh, several, many years ago in Lake Worth, Florida, a man was working for the power company there. You know how Florida gets a lot of lightning? You seen that in the summer? get a lot of lightning storms. This man was up on a tire pole. Uh, he was working and then lightning struck. He fell down. He died. His family sued the power company, took it to court, went through all the stuff. And when they got to the court, the court said the company doesn't have to pay because it's an act of God. Was it God that did it? No. But you know what the people did that were suing the suing the power company they decided they changed their lawsuit and so they filed another lawsuit this is true i'm not making this up god and company and named every church in lake with Flor lake worth florida as defendants because if it was god god's people have to be responsible for it my friends people are messed up on what they're thinking about in these things one tempted no one should say god is tempting me for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed, James 1, 13 and 14. My friends, the devil is a cause of human suffering. And he went so far as to take the pure and spotless Jesus Christ and put him to death on the cross of Calvary. It's really unbelievable. Inasmuch... As the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is who? Yeah. The devil. The devil is the one who brought death into this world. The whole universe, all of the angels of heaven, and there are billions of angels in heaven, by the way, it, the Bible said, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 4, 9, 4, 9, we have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to angels as to well as to man. The devil deceives and de destroys. Jesus gave this parable. He said, Matthew 13, 27 and 28, about the sower. He says, the owner's servants came and said to him, sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where did the weeds come from? And he said, an enemy has done this, he replied. God created a perfect world, but Satan sowed the seed of human suffering. Do you see that, my friends? Yes. Satan is the author of human suffering. Ephesians 6, 12, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts and wickedness in heavenly places. And no wonder for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of what? Light. Light. My friends, sometimes people think that the devil is going to come to you in the most uh, obtuse and evil ways. But sometimes the devil comes to you trying to fake you out. Amen? He transforms himself 
into angel of light. During the early years of Christianity, I've talked about this before the other evening, the church, the people in the church were persecuted. They were killed by the Romans. It was unbelievable. You can read Fox's Books of Martyrs. There's another, another one that covers it as well. But in the early years of Christianity, they, they record that as, as sometimes as many as 10,000 Christians were crucified going into the streets of Rome. Now, what would they do? They would cover them with tar and put a fire underneath them and when it got evening they'd go down through there and light each one of them so that the Christians burning bodies would light the streets going into the Rome. This is what the devil is all about. You never find this, God did this. This is the he is the cause of human suffering but yet the Christians kept gaining. Some of the Christians were beheaded, some were crucified, some were burned at the stake many different ways. The devil could not beat the church by persecution. And so he couldn't beat the church by persecution. He decided to join the church. To kind of come in the back door and bring all the pagan practices that he had brought into existence. He brought them in the back door. And he took the pure church of Jesus and Christ and the apostles. And turned it into the false and apostate church that developed during the dark ages. Matthew 24, 24 it says. There shall arise false Christs and false prophets. Shall show great signs and wonders. In so much, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. You know, these false Christ, false prophets are going to show great signs. But I got news for you, my friends. If you really know what's in the Bible, you are not going to be deceived. Amen? If it were, it's not possible for those who really know their Bible to get deceived, only for those who don't really know it. It says, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles, Revelation 16, 14. The devil is angry. He is angry. He works through natural disasters. He works through spiritualism, death, from, through the psychic powers, through Ouija boards, all of these things, through drugs. This is one of the great ways the devil works because he wants to get your mind so that you're not thinking straight. Amen? Amen? And I tell you, when, you've got, uh, when, you're, when you're on the influence of any kind of drug, even if the doctor has given it to you, Amen. you are not thinking straight. If you've been sick, you're not thinking great. Amen? I know I've been sick before. When you're sick, you just don't think as well. But this is how the devil works through sickness, suffering, death. 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. How do these, li how do these lions work? I've watched a few of these programs, but generally the lions, the, generally it's a female lion who does the hunting. And the, the male lions will circle around a herd of whatever they're trying to get a hold of. And the males will roar. And then, of course, the herd runs the other way. And there's the females there. And they catch them. The devil is going to catch you where you're weak. This is the point. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody's got a weakness. And the devil's going to go after you where you're weak. Revelation 12, 12. Great prophecy. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. What is the word for wrath? What does wrath mean? Anger. Anger. He's angry because he knows that he has a what? Short time. He knows he isn't going to have forever. Heaven's got a rescue plan for this earth, a rescue plan to end all suffering. Here it is. Ezekiel 28, 16 and 18. I will destroy the overcovering cherub. I will cast you to the ground. I will lay you before kings that they may gaze at you. I will bring fire from the midst of you. It shall devour you. I will bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. You have become a horror and, sh and shall be no more how long? Forever. That's what it says. Again, in Revelation, it says, Revelation 20, 10 and 9. And the devil, which deceived them, that's us, the people of the world was thrown into the lake of fire and burning sulfur but the fire came fr down from God excuse me but the fire came down from heaven and what? Devoured. devoured them do you know what devoured mean? I tell you I know what I didn't know used to know what devoured mean before I had uh, I had teenage boys <laughs> two boys my boys are both tall six foot four and they had their friends, they like to eat. And if you want to know what devour is, put a cheese pizza in front of about six boys. When you get done, even some of the cardboard may be gone. 
That's what devour means. And the Bible says the devil is not going to be running some giant rotisserie, my friends. The devil is going to be destroyed. Amen? This is what it says in the Bible. And God's going to recreate everything as it was in the beginning. Perfect. And no more sin, suffering, or death anymore. What happened to Job? After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. You know, this is kind of a little uh, parable, I guess you could say. <laughs> a little type of the antitype, which is God's people. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. Nowhere in the land were there found women as beautiful as his, Job's daughters. And their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children through the fourth generation. So he died old and full of years. God says this of us. He doesn't want this suffering to go on anymore. He wants to put an end to it. Jeremiah 31, 3, it says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. My friends, here is the day coming. Revelation 21, 4 describes it. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old orders of things has passed away. My friends, one of these days, God's going to get rid of all the sickness, suffering, and death on this earth, and we're never going to have to deal with it ever, ever again. Amen? Amen. That's what God has promised. We have a choice tonight. We can follow the power of love as revealed by Jesus Christ who came down here to die for our sins on the cross of Calvary or we can follow the love of power who brought all the sin, suffering, and death and heartache that's come upon this world. How many of you tonight would like to say, I want to follow Jesus Christ and the power of his love for me? If that's your desire tonight, would you raise your hands up with me? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven tonight, we want to thank you for the privilege of coming and studying this, the subject of human suffering. And we know, Lord, you do not bring this suffering. It is only the devil that's bringing it. But that one day soon, you're going to put an end to all suffering, all of these evil, and it will never, ever come out again. And we pray, Lord, every one of us has raised our hands tonight because we want to be ready for that great day when Jesus comes. Help each one of us to be ready to enjoy eternal life, eternal health, eternal riches, and eternal peace. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. My friends, let's follow Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.